Hey, welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm Taylor. And if I'm being honest with y'all, we imported way too many Japanese trick taking games this year and we're broke. <laughs> we're broke. We're broke. And it's hard to pay rent. Our utility bills, like the electricity, which is kind of on like a, a light by light basis, they're slowly shutting off. <laughs> and I. Sorry, it's just hard. We're down to our last gold bar. And these gold bars, they, they're not accepted anywhere. 7-Eleven doesn't take a gold bar. So I have this alchemist guy who is going to come here in a little bit. I'm expecting a call. And they think they can turn this into something special. Something that'll kind of get us out of this jam. I don't know if they could do it. He's going to call any time. But I think he's a bit of an optimist. Kind of like a glass half full metal alchemist. So I'm expecting like... So oh, this is him. Hello? You're here? Okay, I'll bear it down. Hey man, you got the gold? Yeah, here it is. Okay, hold it still. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe he did this. And some... <gasps> and the light. Wow, things are really looking brighter around here. Well, it is June after all. And of course on the channel, we're doing monthly themes. June's theme will be just in June. Or June. Uh, it'll be games that'll be brand new. And sometimes they will be hard to get. Sometimes they'll be super easy to get. And sometimes they will be about to be able to, about to be able to get. Like Aurum, where you can pre-order this soon. And Aurum by Shreesh Bot. Oh, the amazing Shreesh Bot, who's, who's a friend. And uh, also, the gold that uh, was sent to me was filled with candy. Which came with Aram from a Pandasaurus. So, take everything I say with a grain of salt, because, of course, Shreesh is a pow. But anyway, Aram, there's pre-orders, and I think it's coming in July. Woo! I'll put a date there. And the... Oh, I should talk about the hook. The hook to Aram is, if you're familiar with uh, Potato Man, or we covered earlier Tricky Time Crisis, where it's must not follow, but teammates. And there's a twist to the must not follow involving gold. So uh, this is kind of like a just in game. So that is why we're doing just in June. We're gonna have it be kind of like a collaboration, a collaboration with myself. Okay, it's gonna be a collaboration. I have a side channel that uh, covers just different types of game, not trick taking games. And we're gonna have a video on Lacuna there soon, which is the new CMYK game, which is an abstract game. So uh, <laughs> that'll be over there for a collab with myself on just in June. Anyway, let's go to the table and I will teach you how to play Aurum. The deck in Aurum is made up of five suits numbered one through 10. These are the base medals in the game. There's also gold cards in the game, which are four zeros, two ones, two twos, two threes, and then four up to eight. And those are kind of the trump in the game, and I'll explain how those work in a little bit. A game of Orm can be played at three or four players. We'll teach the three-player game in a little bit. Right now we have the four-player setup. It is a team-based game, so you'll always sit across from your partner. So these portal pins are on a team, and then the Panasaurus and the mine pin are on a team. You'll deal out 12 cards each with two left over, and it's perfect information, meaning this is revealed to the players, but for now I'm just gonna move it off to the side. And then also you're gonna have these gold cards, one up to eight, off to a little bit of the side, because that's gonna go to the loser of the trick. Each player is going to get a zero gold card at the start of the round in addition to their 12 cards. And the start player is just random, let's say it's this blue portal piece. So before you go into the first trick, each player is actually gonna bid on how many tricks they think their team is going to win. So maybe this portal player thinks they're gonna win five, and so they'll select that. So everyone's gonna do this simultaneously, and after everyone's picked a card, you'll just reveal. And so whoever has the highest number on a team, that will be the team's bid. So you can kind of combine them close to a teammate. It's kind of what we usually do. And so, for this team right here, if it's tied, you just use one of them. The mines team, they're trying to hit four tricks. 
And then over here, the portals team, they're trying to hit seven tricks because you take the higher number. So then the trick play begins. And again, with the start player, they're going to lead into the trick. And you can only lead into the trick a base metal card. So one of these kind of hand cards here, as you can see, you can never lead a gold card into the trick. So let's just, for an example here, say the portal played a two blue. Orm is a must not follow game meaning Panasaurus when it comes to them, they can play anything but that blue. They could play their gold if they wanted to. But let's say they didn't want it yet and they just play this four. So now coming to the portal player, they think, oh, maybe my partner wants to play low because playing both low and high is good in this game. So maybe we're gonna go high. So again, they can't play either of those two suits. They're just gonna play a nine in the moon suit. And then finally coming to the mind player here, they are just gonna play a six. So how the trick resolves is the lowest played card is going to take a gold from up in this display if it is available. So they take the corresponding number from the gold supply. So since they played a two, they're gonna take a two from the gold supply. And so they have now a zero and a two in their gold supply. As you can see up here, there's sometimes multiple copies of a card, but let's say maybe in the future, this two was gone and the two was the lowest and they go to take the two and it's not there, they just won't get a gold card for that trick. So sometimes it's important to pay attention to what is in the gold kind of supply because you want to make sure you're getting a gold card because not only are they Trump, but also they're worth points at the end, which I'll explain scoring in a little bit. After resolving the lowest, then you're gonna check who played the highest and the highest is going to take the trick. So the nine here was the highest card and the top right portal player would just take the trick in front of them. Again, that portal team is trying to take seven tricks. Important now, even though the portal person won the trick, the person who plays the lowest is actually going to lead the next trick. So that will be the blue portal here. So they are going to lead again. So maybe they play a 10 green. Fast forwarding a little on that second trick, it comes to the mind and they are going to play a three Z purple. So in the game, if you ever play the same number as someone and you're you know, the highest or the lowest, it's the later played card that is going to take the benefit. So in this case, even though they both played a 10, the later played 10, because the green 10 was led by the blue portal is going to win. So the Panasaurus pin is going to win this trick, but coming to the lowest, the lowest was played by the mind, that three here, they are going to take the three gold into their pile and they are going to lead to the trick. So it's always later played when there's a tie. In the interesting edge case that everyone plays the same rank, the last played card will win the trick, collect the gold and lead to the next trick. Jumping ahead to the middle of the next trick, as you can see, it's to the mind and they can play any suit that isn't those. But let's show a fun example with the gold. So even though, you know, they could play this green or this Z, they can, if they want, always play a gold and they can play either of these golds. So maybe they play the zero into the trick. So the highest gold will win the trick. It works as a trump. And also it's the one suit that can be played multiple times into the trick. So let's say when it comes to this blue portal pin, they could, you know, if they want to, again, keep playing into the trick like normal, but if they play their two or even, you know, their zero, cause it's later played, they will take the trick because multiple golds can be played into the trick. Golds don't count as lowest. So you can't, you know, play a two and then get a gold back from the supply, like even if there's a two in there, you'll just win the trick. Interestingly though, any used gold go into the supply. So this two, even though it was theirs, but that since they used it, they are now into back into the supply. So now there's actually two of the two gold back into the supply. And then this three, which was the lowest, would take that three gold and then lead to the trick. Gold actually has another use than trumping in like we just saw or getting points like I mentioned earlier. It also can be used before any trick to change one of the bid cards. So again, before any trick, any player can decide to spend one of their golds and they can choose one of the two bid cards and exchange one of their hand cards with it. So maybe the portal person is saying they're not winning that many tricks. They think seven is kind of a, oof, a big number. They can choose that seven, put it into their hand and maybe just put a two. So now the portal team's bid is now five. So play like this will continue until someone can't play or chooses not to be able to play. And what I mean by that is, let's put up this example here. So let's say this was near the end of the round and this player only had 
these cards. So say this was the mind player's hand, and notice these are red, and you can't play red. So they are in a pickle, and since they can't make a valid play, this could end the hand. So if they didn't have any gold, this definitely would end the hand, right? They would just reveal their hand and be like, end of the round. But you can always optionally, you know, choose to play your gold. So they could choose to play the gold, they would win it, and then the round would, like that trick would happen, if that makes sense. So that's how a round ends, is when someone can't play or chooses not to play, when they are in the predicament of not being able to play. A thing of note, that trick does not evaluate, it just gets discarded, no one gets any gold, no one wins the trick for their bid, nothing happens, the round just ends immediately. Here we are at the end of the round, and so how scoring works at the end of a round is there's two parts. There's the bidding scoring and then the gold scoring. For the bidding, there's three things that can happen. You're either under the bid, over the bid, or you hit the bid exactly. If you're under the bid, like in this case where if Panda, Saurus, and the Mine team, they bid four and they only got three or fewer tricks, they would get zero points. So if you're under, you get no points. If you're over, you get the points as equal to your bid. So if they got five or more, they would get four points. And if they hit exactly like how they did here, where they took three tricks from the mind and then one trick from Panasaurus, they combine to make four exactly, you double that value. So they would get eight points. Then you look at the gold cards amongst the players and you count the number of gold symbols, these kind of suns on it, and that's how many points you get for that card. So like this three is worth one point. So as you can see over here, Panasaurus in the mine, they had threes, these three golds at the end. So zeros are always worth nothing. So that one or that one, they don't have any points on them, but the eight and the three, that is worth four points. So these teams right here, they got four points for gold, whereas the portal got zero. The team with the higher score is going to get a gold nugget. It's like they won a match. After that, you're gonna grab all the cards, reshuffle, do the same setup. The start player is just gonna to move to the left. There is a marker to denote that. So say, again, the first round was the portal player. It would just move to the Panasaurus player. And then it's just best of three. So if a team gets two nuggets, they win the whole game. And that's how to play Aram at four. There are two changes in the back of the rules that kind of turned it into an expert mode. One of them is just removing all the zeros. So no one starts with gold and the only way you can get it is by playing the lowest. And the second thing is, instead of match points, you actually remember the scores, and then whoever has the most points wins. Three player works how you would expect, you are just not on a team. So when you bid at the start, that's just your bid. You can also replace it just like normal. And then also, you actually just play once per player, so three rounds, and if anyone gets two gold nuggets, they win. If there's a tie on nuggets, then it's whoever bid the highest in the final round, they win. So that is Orem. And again, before any final thoughts, this was sent to me from Panasaurus. Reyna sent a wonderful package uh, that had those pins that were in the, the playthrough and that gold bar that was in the intro for the video. And also Shreesh, the amazing, wonderful Shreesh is a friend, so huge gold bar sized grain of salt. That said, must not follow is huge right now. <laughs> I think the must not follow mechanic is underutilized in trick taking uh, genre as a whole, and it is done so, so well here. Some things of note that I think are really interesting, really clever design things that Shreesh did. The gold being worth points being useful for changing bid, and being trump suit. Oh, what a way to make a suit so interesting and so valuable and useful. Amazing ideas where every aspect of, of the, the gold suit is agonizing on what you spend it on. The fact that it's multi-use lets players drive what they wanna do, especially with ending a hand. I love that decision where it comes to that player and they have to choose, especially if they have a, a gold worth points or, or if they have or haven't hit their bid and you know they can't follow whether they want to use the gold or not. I think that's such an interesting decision. I love player defined end games and player defined situations where the gold lets the players choose how long they want a hand to go. I like Potato Man. I think it's a good game for sure, but I do find that sometimes you can not take full advantage of a hand or sometimes the hand ends a little early and you feel like, uh, feels like you wanted a little bit more. And the game, Aurum, 
does such a good job of letting the hand breathe a little bit more. So 12 cards, which is nice. Of course, you bid with one, so it becomes 11. But the fact that there's five suits, but still four players is really smart too. Potato Man has just one suit per player. And Tricky Time Crisis has one suit per player. And it works in those games. But the fact that this one's so much about like hitting your bid, especially like a team bid, I'm talking mostly about the four player game, you need that room to breathe, I think. And I think it's more interesting when there's a little bit of flexibility on how long a hand could go. I find that the changing of the bid is interesting. It's a very nice bit of flexibility there as well, where <laughs> especially when you might not be on the same page as your partner, that, that there's no passing in the game. That's almost like how you communicate. I find often certain team-based games are almost team-based games because that's just how four players works. But this one, there's elements in place, there's mechanisms like the swapping of the bid or the join two cards as your team bid or the fact that you're even hitting a bid as a team at all that uh, re really reinforce the, the team aspect. The other thing that does a great job of reinforcing the team aspect is the fact that you want to play both high and low. First off, love when games value both high and low cards. And the middle is also valuable here too, because if <laughs> players are kind of going really high, you can kind of sneak in a middle card, which is worth more gold points. And holding onto that is so great. Getting the lowest with like a six or seven or, or an eight, whoo, it, it feels insane, right? It feels so wild. It's those things that they talk about in like game design, like those bingo moments where you may lose the hand, <laughs> which, which stinks, but it still feels so great if you were able to get like a seven, play it as the lowest and get that gold card. It, I, I've seen players even, you know, after they lose a hand like that, they just, they remember those moments, which is so fun. Back to my point, the fact that like the team base stuff is interesting is that you want to play both high and low and it's fun to see where your partner's mindset is. When they lead low, you're like, okay, I'm trying to be high. And sometimes there are those obvious moments in the game or they lead high, they're like, okay, I'm gonna be the low person. But it's nice to try to work off that as a team. And sometimes like they're high and they just got beaten by the next player. So then you're like, oh, I'm gonna be even higher than the next player. And I'm like super high. But then you leave that vacuum open for the hammer to either get a really good gold card or even be higher than you right, because later played is the highest, so like no card is safe. It's a great tension. A note about the production, I think it's mostly stellar. The card size is really nice. It, the cards already kind of evoke this tarot feeling a little bit. I love the size of the cards, kind of like mini tarot, but also there's just such a clever thing to the suits where they have different hand gestures for each of the suits and also they look really great and the symbols themselves are wonderful and the theme oh my gosh what a lovely theme where you're just <laughs> you're putting in base metals and you're you're alchemizing gold it's uh, it's great when a trick taker has a nice theme and this one is so present in the graphic design uh, which i which i absolutely love this is a gorgeous gorgeous looking game the only hiccup is that i had a tape Shreesh's name to the front of the box. It's a gorgeous cover though, other than that. And I think like overall gold inlay, which I didn't really show off, but the gold inlay, the gold nuggets and the start marker, it's one of the nicer productions that, that I've seen. So that's, that's super nice. I do think there were some parts of the rule book that I had to go online for like errata for, like if everyone plays the same number, things like that. But overall, very nice, especially um, table presence. Very nice production. I think it's super cool that they have that intro kind of tutorial mode with the zero golds and the match scoring. It's nice to kind of use as a, uh, an intro to the game. I do definitely prefer playing with the expert modes. The decision to use a gold and when to use a gold and scratching and clawing to get a gold card, um, I really like. And having the zeros out there kind of makes it a little bit too easy. So I like uh, not having those when I like really, really play. And also, even though the match scoring, again, is really nice and clean, and I think it's probably more, you know, fair and keeps everyone in, I do like the scoring because 
then you're really trying to go for big points, you know, and, and trying to really hit your bid. And there feels like a, a little bit more of a tension, a little bit more of like a carryover between the rounds. But I think that is kind of more, I mean, it's called expert mode. <laughs> I think that's more for like the trick ticker aficionado. So, but anyway, I really like that they have both modes or both editions for uh, the game. The three player game is really fun too. I think it actually does a nice job of maybe the one con I have of the game. And I mentioned it a little bit earlier. It might not be a con to, to some players because I think some players really like just getting into a trick taking flow. But sometimes it's just a little obvious what to play in the game. You know, like if you're the hammer and you want to be either high or low and you have that same card as another player who has the higher low and it's like, okay, boop, I'm gonna just take it, you know? Or if your partner plays really low in the four player game, you're like, okay, I'll probably try to play high. And so I think those obvious plays work in the game because there are like crunchier decisions down the line and it actually just kind of is a nice like way to induce flow I like the idea of like flow in a in a trick taker of just like really just keep going you know like keep playing but what i like about the three player one is since you don't have that partner who's either going to go high or low and you try to like work off what they're trying to do you get that situation where you're on your own and you have to choose whether you are going to just go high or low so like the three player i think it has some some fun tension to it they feel pretty different it's cool when a game feels so different at different player counts kind of like yokai septet another great example of like four players partner, three players alone. But overall, I think there's a really good kind of difference between the two modes. And I would definitely like to play either on a given day. I don't think overall like one is, you know, better than the other. So that is Orem. And again, huge grain of salt because Panasaurus sent me this and Shreesh is a good pal. But <laughs> I really like the game. I think it does must follow in interesting ways. It handles the ending of a round, ending of a hand in interesting ways, gives players both smooth decisions, is maybe what I'll call them, confidently that's the right play decisions, but also really crunchy, what am I doing, why am I doing this, what's going to happen. Also has intense moments of hitting your bid exactly, which I love that, doubles the points, that's huge, but also the fact that below is nothing and above is points at least, so you're kind of like a runaway train, you're like, give me as many tricks as possible. And then you try to hit the brakes. You try to screech the rigs right when you're close, but going over, not the worst. Cause at least you get points. Love that. I think there's a nice building tension, especially when maybe you want to just end the hand on purpose because you've already gotten your bid or gone over your bid and the other team hasn't. So then you start messing with things, short suiting yourself on purpose to end the hand. I love a move where you can use your gold to exchange with your bid and then short suit yourself so that when it comes around to you, you end the hand oh, before the other team can get their final trick that they need. There's some really cool maneuvers. Anyway, this is supposed to be a summary. <laughs> I think Orm's a wonderful time. Definitely check it out. And I'm so excited to see Shreesh's other stuff. Um, spoiler alert, a little Shreesh spoiler alert. I've been playing some of their other games and whoo, I'm excited. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Catch y'all later.